Can I start? Oh, okay. Wait, pause. <laughs> this is uncomfortable. I don't even know how to like tell the story. What if I start crying? Okay. <laughs> Who is Rosa B? Who is like? Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> Miss Rosa may be, but since you'll be Rosa B. Bit. <laughs> I was born and raised in Silver Spring, Maryland, around like the Whedon and Rockville area, and I lived there my whole life. But I went to school sort of around the Bethesda area, so I was never really around my group of friends who lived around my house. Okay, let me backtrack. So, it got really rough around 8th grade. It all started off with first just like the anonymous site. People would post a bunch of stuff about my body, how I would care my, carry myself, but no one actually said anything to my face. I'm not even, I can't even remember like what it said exactly, I just remember it was being, it was so rude. People would just post stuff about how I looked, and these people would put it on their own profile, or they would put it publicly. I didn't have the courage, I didn't have like the bravery to like say anything, I was just like, okay, well, this is what people think, this is what people are trying to say, what am I going to do about it, I'm just one person. I got really, really depressed, I couldn't talk to anyone, I kind of turned to the internet. <laughs> I saw this post on Tumblr, that was... Basically a piece of paper, and someone had written, I am this, and it was just repeated like down the page basically. It was all just negative traits, and I, obviously I don't know who the author was, I don't know who originally posted it, but for some reason inside of me, I was like, I want to do that. And long story short, my school kind of got involved. Yeah, so my school got involved, and I guess they came to the conclusion that I needed to see someone. And so I did for a little bit. I started talking to a therapist every week. They were just doing like check-ins with me. The only reason why I didn't like it is because I was trying to put how I was feeling into words and I didn't even know how to put it into words. I had no idea how I was feeling. And I was telling it to someone I didn't even know. It felt like they were trying to force themselves into my life without actually getting to know me. Yeah, that's pretty much how it went. Eventually, school started, and I, I told my mom I didn't want to. One, I didn't want to wake up at like nine in the morning every Saturday because that's when I had to go. And I also just, I just wasn't feeling it. And then eventually, high school came around, and I joined cheer. So I found my squad. So we, a few of us were like already like friends before I even started cheering. I started my sophomore year on the JV team. I just met a bunch of girls who just loved to cheer and I had no prior experience. Everyone was so friendly, everyone told me how to do stuff. And I got really into fitness. <laughs> I started running a lot. Me and my dad used to bike and run a lot. So that was kind of how I got introduced to the whole fitness thing. I joined Planet Fitness with my dad and that's how it all started. <laughs> I ran <laughs> for like <laughs> 20 minutes because I was too afraid to do anything else. I didn't talk to anybody. <laughs> I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't have anything planned. So I guess that was the only thing I, I knew how to do basically. So I did that for 20 minutes and I started doing that basically every day because <laughs> my dad would go to the gym every day with me. So I ran for about 10 to 20 minutes every day before I do anything. After that, I was like, you know what? I think it's time to you know expand my horizons. Uh, and I asked my dad to show me how to do stuff. He taught me how to bench how to squat, and then I started going to other gyms, I started working in a gym, and I started meeting people who had the same goals as I did. Yeah, it was nice to just know that like, I wasn't alone, like, viewing my body a certain way. They taught me how to, like, rearrange my goals in a way that didn't focus so much on how I looked. It was more of how much energy and effort I was putting into my own workouts. So, yeah. I'd say being a female in this industry is definitely intimidating, but I think it's a huge motivation factor. Years ago, you would never see girls posting videos of themselves working out, especially if they didn't have any kind of professional background. Um, I don't think I had posted anything about like my workouts on my on my main page, like my main Instagram page. It was mainly just a lot of my friends asking me, especially my friends on cheer. Um, they would just be like, how did you get your body? And then my arms like so much bigger. They were like begging me to post my workout, asking me how I got my butt. <laughs> I didn't want it just to be just workouts. Like I wanted it to be like how like how I got to this position. It was kind of hard starting out at first. I told as many people as I could. I posted it on my personal Instagram. My first few posts were just like introductions about me, how long I've been working out for, my transformation picture. How can I put out the most like 
content that would be beneficial to my audience, but also have it be like raw and not corny. I wanted it also to just be like a community where people can talk and not be embarrassed to talk about stuff. Everyone on Instagram is a normal person and it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to do something wrong, and that's all part of the experience. I think a lot of females are afraid to do something wrong in the gym, like they come they come there and they're everyone, they don't know what to do, they don't have anything planned out. Friends and people like on my Instagram, especially if you're a female, what I used to do and what I still do is I watch YouTube videos, I do my own research, especially like I ask my friends who are really into fitness, what do you think about this exercise, how do I do this right? And it helps to just get that insight instead of just walking in and feeling like you don't know what you're doing, feeling like everyone's looking at you. I'd rather have that like sense of confidence before walking into an environment that I'm not used to. Do people perceive you like differently now than before? I don't really go out of my way to ask for people's opinions now, just because at the end of the day I'm doing this for myself. No one's opinion really matters, no one's opinion should matter, um, because if, you, if you're constantly thinking about what everyone else thinks, like you're going to drain yourself and this whole journey isn't going to last. People just feel the need to make other people feel bad. Now, like everyone has technology, everyone has like such an easy way to comment stuff and just speak their mind. It's great to have a community where you can get feedback from other people, but it also gives bullies an opportunity to just go off. I I want to. I don't want my page just to be about just workout solely, and I think that's where I'm starting. And that's okay, just because I'm not used to talking in front of the camera. So this is a big thing for me. I also just want to get used to just talking about other things, other aspects of fitness that females are too afraid to speak up about. Not just females, just like guys too, because I know a lot of my followers, a lot of my audience are male, but that also just opens up a discussion to like a broader audience, you know? And hopefully people aren't afraid to like ask me questions, aren't afraid to talk about stuff that they're like, um, usually would be afraid to talk about. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm starting small right now. Hopefully it grows. Bars. <laughs> <laughs>